from Austin, Texas at the Tech Gathering of the Year. They call it Spring Break for Geeks. Rackspace, the open cloud company, presents the Scobalizer with the movers, the doers, shaking things up and impacting our world. Now, Robert Scoble. Hey, this is Robert Scoble, and uh, we're here at the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience at South by Southwest 2013. It's really crazy here. We just had a country music star on. An astronaut just visited <laughs> Ron Garan and spent six months in space. And now I have the tea fairy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is getting weird. <laughs> Anyways, who are you? My name is Elise Peterson, and I am the founder of a wonderful startup called T-Let. And uh, what, what is tea lit? And are we going to have some tea? Well, I brought tea here, and of course, yeah, we have some tea. It's always <laughs> nice to have a cup of tea when you uh, chat with new friends. So tea lit is an online marketplace that connects independent tea growers directly to tea lovers. Cool. So you can kind of envision it as like an Etsy for, for tea farmers. Okay. So we uh, have a network of uh, tea growers around the world, and we tell their stories, and we help distribute their tea th uh, through our retail subscription service. Of course, everybody's got a uh, subscription box service now um, in a marketplace, but right now we are launching a wholesale auction, so tea shops and retailers can source these teas directly from the farmers and, and bid on them, and we can uh, find a true market value for these uh, products, which now are dealt uh, mostly as commodities, and uh, the power all lies in the corporation. So we're trying to disintermediate the industry and empower the producers, the, the artists behind these products. And so in our model, the farmers get 60% margins. Now they, they usually get around 15% if they're lucky. Corporations take all the markups and they get most of the value. So yeah. we are a social enterprise and just trying to uh, empower agriculture business and uh, build strong communities around the world. How, how do you get people, the reason the brands take so much is because they have uh, distribution power. Yes. You know, Lipton is able to get into every shop in the world, every restaurant and every re grocery store, right? Yes. How are you going to uh, disrupt the attention of people or the distribution of people so that they come to you and are able to disintermediate those middlemen um, the okay. way you are uh, laying out? <laughs> yeah, so there's always going to be room in the market for, for lift-ins and for those types of retailers, but there is no one supplying these like high-end fine teas. And right now, the tea market's on the incline. Um, here in the U.S., uh, you may have heard Starbucks acquired a tea company for over $600 million. So yeah. they're betting a lot on tea. They're actually separating their coffee from their tea and have tea-only shops. So there is a connoisseurship that's developing similar to like wine, and there are no retailers or distributors or wholesalers that are providing um, this fine uh, product to the market because uh, they're aggregators. That's the way they get scale and efficiency is by uh, going to Japan and buying out all the leaves they can and just blending it all together. Um, you lose those distinct characteristics of each farm. Yeah. Um, it's similar to wine. Now, you, any Joe Schmo buys a bottle of wine, he knows a, a decent bottle of wine is going to have the vintage, the, the type of grape, and the, uh, the vineyard that was used. So um, we're trying to provide that, and no one's doing it for tea. So you know, we're trying to ride this wave. But really, in the big picture, what we envision to do is prove this model in tea, and then we can diversify into other products, coffee, chocolate, spices, honey, um, and then eventually build a real online farmer's market. Now, at, at Rackspace San Francisco, the, the engineering team is, there's some people who are so passionate about coffee, it's nuts. Mm -hmm. that, like, they go crazy and want all yeah. sorts of different stuff. And there's a whole crowd that's really passionate about tea. Yep. And what what makes this kind of, uh, why? what kind of flavors are available to the market that the average Lipton drinker might not even realize is there to try out? Well, I, something that I like to tell people that really shocks them um, is that all tea, black, white, oolong, green, it all comes from the same plant. So that's something that most people don't, don't register. So, you know, um, and even a green tea, like right now you may think of green tea as uh, the box at the store and then the tea bag, you put it out in front of your hot water, you drink your green tea. There's like a million types of green teas. Uh, the way it's processed, how long it's aged, how, when was it harvested through the season, um, this is all the, the connoisseurship that we're introducing to 
our customers. And we do it in a very fun, interactive way and leveraging technology to do it. And um, it's, it's really interesting uh, that we found some correlations between connoisseurship of, of items like tea and coffee. These guys geeking out on the tea and coffee that you've seen. There's a high correlation between that and like online gaming. You know, so we're actually trying to build our online experience for the end user um, to bring together the offline experience of what we're doing here, drinking the tea and talking about where it came from, um, and bring it online and almost gamifying it and making it into an adventure uh, as you explore around the world. So um, when, we, when we distribute the tea and send to our customers, we uh, give them these trading cards. Yep. So this is the actual farmer that's making um, this organic oolong tea out of Indonesia. So we have the tea's information, uh, preparation guidelines here, and then of course the short links uh, take you to uh, the profile page for the tea, but over over time as we develop our apps and our, our game, this will all play into it and hopefully, you know, uh, we'll have our users playing with these cards like uh, like Pokemon, you know, like yeah. power up, like uh, different farmers have different qualities and um, really try to create an engaging experience um, with tea, which you commonly wouldn't ever really think of tea. A lot of people think tea is for grannies and, you know, British people. No, but no, Kevin Rose, man, he is hardcore. Yeah. And I forget the place he goes in. Samovar. Simpsons. Samovar mm -hmm. Tea Lounge, of course. Yeah, yeah. And they're really, it, a friend of mine took me there and, and they have tea that's really bizarre. Yep. Right? Yeah. And um, it's a lot of fun. It's a very social thing, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I understand what, what you're doing. So at South by, it, I, I love that you, you're coming in here because at South by, there's a whole thing about guerrilla marketing. If you're a startup, you can't afford the two hundred thousand dollars it it costs to buy the Champion Sports yeah. Bar, <laughs> and, which is a one real estate. <laughs> we, we're right across the street from the yeah. convention center. Finally, yeah. after yeah. Uh, twelve years in business, <laughs> yeah. you know it, th this is really fun. But most startups can't afford to do yes. this. So how do you punch through the noise here? And this is one way, right? Yeah. What yeah. Is, what's happening out in the street? It's a street war out there. I yeah. saw a highlight <laughs> hanging out, popsicles, <laughs> and there's like uh, people with weird big heads yeah, on. You know. Yeah, yeah. We fit right in here. Usually um, we stand out. Uh, it's funny, we just finished the 500 Startups, dem um, the, the Accelerator, and we had Demo Day. And uh, for our first Demo Day at Microsoft, I actually dressed like this and pitched on stage like this. and got a lot of uh, media attention, right? And they're always asking the question, like, why are you dressed like this? Like, uh, isn't this like supposed to be some professional environment or whatever? And it's like, if there's press there and people there and potential customers there, we want to do whatever we can to get their attention. And, and this outfit, like as funny and, and bright as it is, it actually embraces our brands. Um, you know, th this, this outfit is actually a cosplay on the Tea Fairy, which we had actually developed through um, ideation, through uh, design thinking. Um, you know, we did a design thinking boot camp over a couple of days and this is what we came up with and um, really engages our, our potential customers that we're reaching out to, which uh, tends to be um, men, um, 20 to 40 years old, uh, making you know, a, a, a decent amount of money so they have a lot of extra cash to spend and they like to engage with uh, products and, and know the origins and you know, some people call it kind of like hipster, hipster type mentality, and, and that's where our product is now. As we scale and evolve and um, get economies of scale, we'll probably be introducing some more accessible teas that are not so expensive and a little bit more every day, and then that's when our demographic will widen. But for the time being, we're really trying to engage, engage kind of the geek community, and um, we have a lot of thinking to do for Kevin Rose because uh, Kevin, who is now a great friend of Tealet, a great friend of mine, um, he has done a great job of bringing tea culture, like true tea culture, like this type of tea culture, not tea bags, but actual tea um, online and making yeah. it kind of hip and cool. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great where, where it's going. And Are you thinking of working? So, so in our kitchen, because we have these two groups that are so passionate about coffee and tea, I, I see that they, on recruiting, that they pull recruits into the kitchen and talk about tea and, and, and their passions, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of uh, what gets people to come to Rackspace because yeah. they see we're really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're crazy about a lot of different things yeah. from uh, bicycling, there's a whole thing, to, to tea, to whatever. Are you working with corporations to get a, a, a different kind of tea into uh, yeah. their kitchen so that yeah. they uh, can s satisfy this kind of, uh, not just recruiting, but uh, cultural uh, mm -hmm. fit kind yeah, of Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we have launched a corp corp corporate subscription, which we have a 
piloting in a couple of startups in San Francisco. And uh, when we go, we, we do a tea party. Sometimes I dress like this and we kind of demonstrate how to prepare the different teas and then we just leave a big box and we, we leave the uh, utensils for them to use, the teapots and whatever. And we encourage them to, to try to make it a daily habit, to make new friends, sit down for 15 minutes, don't talk about work, just enjoy a cup of tea together and you'll, you'll be amazed where your conversation goes. Um, as far as scaling it, we've kind of run into some, some issues because a lot of distribution of uh, um, food and drinks to large corporations are done through like th third party distributors. So um, a, a key uh, customer that we'd like to get our tea into is Google. Um, right? They're, they're about providing sustainable products to their employees and our product is definitely fitting in with this. And there's another startup out of the Y Combinator Accelerator called Sorcery that is um, trying to do the uh, farm to fork uh, distribution online, kind of like Cisco's distribution of food, um, and their uh, pilot customer is Google. So hopefully we'll get our tea in there, and um, now we're working with a co-packer who can actually custom design our labels on our tins when we, we send to our customers. So for like a Google, we could actually have it all branded with all that stuff, um, their, their own branding, but it's still, the, the, the tea itself is still coming from the farmer. We can still provide this information, have our apps that people can use to learn more about what they're consuming and connect with the origins of their products. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming out. Yeah, it's uh, really great to meet you. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm liking the tea. So great. Here, I'll <laughs> you might have the converted cup. me to the tea <laughs> thing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Good. It's, it's a nice respite from the uh, beer and whiskey <laughs> at well, all the that's parties. What, that's what know? we're getting. We're getting a lot of people coming and drinking. We're, we actually are we're, uh, demoing here um, at the Winner's Circle because yeah. uh, we're, we're a Rackspace customer. And oh, we're just kind for, of for being a customer. Yeah, we love it. That's great. Like, we, we can scale, no problem, no fears. Like, so now we can focus on our product and our tea and our quality and just know that um, all of the infrastructure is there and we can scale whenever we need. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of demonstrating uh, the capabilities of Rackspace products and how a company like us, a social enterprise that's selling tea, could be uh, leveraging technology just as, as any of these other cool startups are doing. Um, so yeah, a lot of people come by drinking tea with us and hangovers or whatever, they drink a lot of beer and so yeah, we're kind of providing a, a little bit of detox. For hangovers? Um, you know, it's all, it's all pretty good for hangovers. It's There's just not key one drinking. particular no, one. <laughs> no, I mean, caffeine, maybe if you need a little caffeine to, to wake you up a little bit, there's definitely different, different ranges. This is kind of a mid-level. This is actually an oolong out of uh, Taiwan, Very Hainan, cool. Taiwan. Where do we learn more about it? Tlet.com. Very cool. Tlet. Thank you so much for coming in. Aloha. Great. And so we're uh, doing a whole bunch in the next uh, couple minutes uh, of entrepreneurs and innovators, cool people who are doing interesting things with technology and cloud computing here at the Open Cloud Experience. If you're here in Austin, come on by and you'll meet all sorts of interesting companies like this down in the Open Cloud Experience. And if you're not, probably you're not because you're watching on uh, the streaming video, uh, stay tuned. We're going to be back in a few minutes with another uh, entrepreneur. So when Rackspace's live coverage from Austin continues, we'll show you the future in real time. Rackspace, backed by fanatical support, bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest daily. Hmm, so good, it hurts.